Welcome back to Battleship Systems. Today we'll see the backup power system a battleship keeps around just in case. When designing ships that are so heavily dependent on electricity, we need to make sure power is available to critical systems. We'll also take a look at what happened on the Dali and discuss whether or not that could also happen on a battleship. When talking about the emergency power system, we have to ask, if battleships are designed to still function with large portions of the hull destroyed, what really constitutes an emergency? Vital systems can already be powered by multiple switchboards in case one of the generators fail, providing multiple routes for the cables, some even inside the armored citadel. The reason ships have emergency switchboards is to provide continuous power to select auxiliaries and lights that's completely independent from the main power system. In other words, if you have to use an emergency switchboard, the ship's already sees some extensive damage. So what systems do the emergency switchboards power? Well, actually nothing. They exist merely as a standby power source for special equipment that can either be manually or automatically switched to when the main power fails. As a result, these switchboards are much smaller than the ones for main power. So what needs this dependable source of power, and how are the emergency switchboards able to provide it? Well, that varies by class of battleship. So today, let's start in reverse order with the Iowas, since we've been talking about them so much lately. Iowa-class battleships have two emergency switchboards. One shares the space with the distilling plant, and the other gets its own compartment. Each switchboard can supply power through either the local bus or the remote bus. The local bus gets its power from one of the two closest main turbo generators. So for example, the Ford switchboard can either be powered by number one, or it can switch to the number two main switchboard. It's important to note that the switching for the local bus happens automatically. If it can't get power from one, it'll automatically close the bus tie to the number two switchboard. But what if both sources fail? That's when it starts the emergency diesel generator and connects it to the local bus. The remote bus is powered by the switchboard on the opposite end of the ship through a bus tie. These 250 kilowatt diesel generators are started by compressed air and will generate the same 450 volts alternating current that the ship's service system uses. On the Missouri and Wisconsin, these generators were made by Cooper Bessemer, whereas on the Iowa New Jersey, it was made by American Locomotive, with Westinghouse making the generators themselves. The Alco generators are 365 horsepower six-cylinder four-stroke diesel engines. One generator is enough to power almost a hundred homes. This is the generator section of the switchboard. Just like with the main switchboards, we have an exciter field rheostat to control how much voltage the generator is producing. This can also be controlled from the automatic voltage regulator. However, you cannot parallel the two emergency generators together. The middle section houses the big bus transfer circuit breakers that direct power to the local bus. By the way, do you have an emergency generator for your home? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. On the end is the power feeder section. These switches supply the emergency power to the critical systems near the switchboard. There's sort of a fuse selector switch that allow you to select whether each circuit is being powered by the local or remote bus. On a battleship, power circuits are separate from light circuits. So each emergency switchboard has a transformer to bring the voltage down to 117 volts, which is then fed into the emergency lighting switchboard. This 117 volt switchboard allows you to light critical sections of the ship if the main steam plants are not functioning. Okay, so what do the emergency switchboards actually power? Well, they energize small things like communications, radios, directors, radars, engine alarms, and pumps, 
but they also energize big things like 40 millimeter guns and all of the five inch mounts. Yes, that's 10 dual purpose five inch 38 twin mounts. That's as much firepower as four Fletcher class destroyers, at least in the battleship's original configuration. All fully functional thanks to the ship's emergency generators. And now on to the South Dakota class. There are again two emergency switchboards, but this time two 200 kilowatt emergency generators. Unlike the Iowa switchboards, the power and lighting feeders come out of the same board. However, the South Dakotas cannot power any of the 5 inch mounts from their emergency switchboards. That's something unique to the Iowas. And now on to the emergency power system of the North Carolinas. And this is where you can see some of the creativity General Electric used to have when designing switchboards. They received L-shaped switchboards that enable them to fit in the main machinery spaces. On the side is the control relay section which houses the circuit breakers for powering the local bus and all of the relays that make up the automatic transfer function. On the front are the usual controls, field rheostats and the automatic voltage regulator. This section houses the 400 amp breaker that connects the emergency generator to the switchboard. This section up here is the lighting feeders and on the bottom are the power feeders. Notice there are circuit breakers instead of fuse switches. There's also an interlock that you have to slide over to prevent you from selecting both local and remote buses on the same feeder. North Carolina has two 300 horsepower Fairbanks Morse diesel engines that can power these switchboards. They are connected to a 200 kilowatt AC generator and a 5 kilowatt DC exciter. You can see all this equipment when you visit the battleship North Carolina. Now finally, could a battleship lose all power and crash into a bridge like the Daly did to the Francis Scott Key Bridge? Let's first go over some similarities between battleships and cargo ships. Both require power to move the rudder. The big, fast battleship rudders are too big to be manhandled. Also, both battleships and cargo ships have diesel generators. So in the event the battleship loses power, can the emergency generators power the steering system? No. The steering gear requires more power than the emergency generators can provide. The only battleship that can move its rudder without turbo generators is the North Carolina, and that's because it has main diesel generators. This is similar to what the DALI has for its power generation. The consensus seems to be that there were two sets of wires that could deliver power to the steering engine. Something happened to one of those sets of wires, causing it to trip the breaker, but it did not switch over to the other set of wires because the automatic bus transfer equipment was set to manual. Battleships have similar setups for their steering power panels. So, to answer the question, could a blackout cause loss of steering control on a battleship? The answer is yes, but it's somewhat unlikely. Battleships require almost 2,000 people to man and operate stations. When the Dally collided, it had 22. Battleship sailors are constantly put through drills that simulate casualties and there is a 100% possibility that the steering gear room is being manned whenever the ship is steaming. A highly manned ship is a lot more effective than a highly advanced ship. Nevertheless, there are occasions in which battleships have collided with other ships. Or you could say, other ships made the unfortunate mistake of veering into a battleship's lane. In lieu of donations to me, please consider donating to a battleship museum like the Battleship Missouri. There's a link in the description that'll bring you to the USS Missouri Memorial Association website where you can donate to the nonprofit organization. Thanks for watching.